So we begin our service this morning with readings from the Quran. The Quran is the holy scripture of the Islamic faith that Muslims believe was a divine revelation revealed directly to Prophet Muhammad by God over a period of 23 years in the 7th century AD. Different verses were revealed at different times of the Prophet's life, and each of them had a context behind the revelation. Over the years, there has only been one version of the Quran, and the original content has been preserved in its entirety, which Muslims believe is one of the miracles of the Quran. Many Muslims across the world, from the Far East to the Middle East, from Asia to America, have memorized the entire Quran in its original form in Arabic. A person who memorizes the entire Quran is called a Hafiz, and we have the pleasure of hosting a Hafiz today, Abdul Ahad, who goes to the Islamic Center of Naperville. He became a Hafiz last year and is now a full-time student in a local high school. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان ألا تطغوا في الميزان وأقيموا الوزن بالقسط ولا تخسروا الميزان والأرض وضعها للأنام فيها فاكهة والنخل ذات الأكمام والحب ذو العصف والريحان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان خلق الإنسان من صلصال كالفخار وخلق الجان من مارج من نار فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان رب المشرقين ورب المغربين فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان مرج البحرين يلتقيان بينهما برزخ لا يبغيان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان يخرج منهما اللؤلؤ والمرجان فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وله الجوار المنشآت في البحر كالأعلام فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان In the name of Allah, the compassionate, the merciful. The compassionate Allah who taught you the Qur'an created man and taught him how to speak and convey his feelings and thoughts. The sun and the moon move along their computed courses. The shrubs and the trees prostrate in adoration. He has raised the heaven on high and created the balance. Don't ever tamper with this balance. Therefore, you also establish weight with justice and do not give less measure. He laid out the earth for his creatures with all its fruits and palms having sheathed clusters and, grains, and grain with husk and scented herbs. So, O oh men, which of your Lord's favors will you deny? 
He created man from sounding clay, similar to pottery, and created jinns from smokeless fire. So, O oh man, which of your Lord's favors will you deny? He is the Lord of the two east and of the two west. So, O oh men, which of your Lord's favors will you deny? He has made the two oceans apparently meeting together, yet between them is a barrier which they cannot cross. So, O oh men, which of your Lord's favors will you deny? He, pr he produces pearls and coral from both of them. So, O oh men, which of your Lord's favors will you deny? His are the ships looming up like mountains on the sea. So, O oh men, which of your Lord's favors will you deny? Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim In the name of God, most compassionate, most merciful. I'd like to begin with Islamic greeting, Assalamu alaikum, which means greetings of peace to all of you, my brothers and sisters in humanity. First of all, thank you, Ms. Gelder. Thank you, all of you, for inviting us. It is indeed, uh, we are indeed honored and humbled by your invitation. Uh, this is the first time I've been to a service here, and I really enjoyed it. And uh, it's been, I've been enlightened that a lot of the f values that you share are very similar to the values, you know, we uh, uh, share as well. Um, and the concern about the youth, that is also a concern for us, you know, that is our focus. You know, we try to focus on a youth to give them a, a, a better life, uh, and guide them to the straight path. The only difference is we uh, use the Quran uh, as a source of guidance and the sayings of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a source of uh, guidance for us. By the way, this expression, brothers and sisters in humanity that I used earlier, has a significant place in Islamic history. About 1400 years ago, Imam Ali, who was the son-in-law and a successor of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he, was, he had appointed a governor in Egypt. And Egypt at that time was a multi-faith province, uh, which was under the then uh, Muslim empire. So when he appointed the governor, he had laid out, outlined some rules of governance. And he said, infuse your heart with mercy, love, and kindness for your subjects, for they are of two kinds. Either they are your brethren in faith, or your brethren in creation. So this sense of respect of humankind, of all humankind, has been an integral part of Islam. A religion that was brought to us by our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. A religion that is followed by one-fifth of the human race. And a Prophet Muhammad, whom we believe was sent as a mercy to mankind, who said, none of you truly believes until he loves for his neighbor what he loves for himself. Which is why, you know, I, I really enjoyed when the, the lighting of the chalice uh, was along the same theme, uh, which was, you know, again, it's a common value and a common belief. There are many such references in the Quran and in the sayings of the Prophet that propagate peace, justice, and social harmony. In fact, the word Islam, the root of the word Islam, comes from a word silm, which means peace. But the actual meaning of the word Islam is submission to the will of God. So it's best understood, Islam is best understood as attaining peace by submitting to the will of God. Now all this is nice to hear, but let's address the elephant in the room. You might ask, if Islam promotes peace, why is it that we hear of so many violent actions in the world that are attributed to the religion of Islam? Or at least that's what Fox News will make you believe. Um, well, the answer is simple. None of these violent actions perpetrated by the so-called Islamic extremists has anything to do with the religion of Islam or its teachings. In fact, an overwhelming 
majority of over 1.5 billion Muslims across the world strongly condemn all forms of aggression, violence, and killing of innocent lives. Overwhelming majority. You know? But the problem is you hear only of that very, very small minority. The Quran says whoever kills an innocent person, it's as if he's killed the entire mankind. And whoever saves a life, a single life, it's as if he's saved all of mankind. So all this violence that you hear about, most of it is primarily politically motivated and not based on a religious belief. And it is true that there may be a very small, small minority that may have a religious belief that drives them, but that religious belief is a distorted belief and an extreme belief which again goes against the tenets of Islam because extremism is clearly forbidden in Islam. So people who believe that they're doing it for religion are misguided. It has nothing to do with the true teachings of Islam. Now in the past few months, you know, the news has been inundated with the violent actions of ISIS or sometimes referred to as the Islamic State. I cringe when I hear that term because there are two issues with this. They're neither Islamic nor are they a state. <laughs> ISIS, in fact, their actions are diametrically opposite to the teachings of Islam. For example, ISIS spreads cruelty and violence, whereas Islam is about mercy and peace. ISIS is based on hate and vengeance, whereas Islam is forgiving and persevering. In fact, there's a very nice article in the Huffington Post uh, by Salam al mariati if you want to look it up. The article is called, The Key to Defeating, Islam, uh, key to defeating ISIS is Islam. And let me, let me repeat that. The key to defeating ISIS is Islam. And there are many more comparisons between ISIS and what true Islam is in this article. So uh, I encourage you to look it up if you can. Now, the true Islamic state, you know, when they, they claim to be an Islamic state, but the true Islamic state was under our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was a prophet and also a head of state. It was during his time that he established a society that we think should be a model for all nations. The state that he ruled was declared a sanctuary protecting and securing me all members of the community of all faiths. In fact, he said, you know, the Jews that lived in, uh, in, the, in the community then had rights alongside the Muslims. They had their religion and a right to practice their religion. Even the rules of engagement of war during his time had clear guidelines against harming non-combatants and even the environment. Some of the rules, and it was a whole list of rules, but I'll just highlight a couple of the rules, a few of the rules. One of them says, do not violate treaties. Do not kill an old person, a child, or a woman. Do not cut down a tree. Do not poison the water of the enemy. And the list goes on. And remember, these rules were written 1,400 years ago, way before the Geneva Convention came into place. <laughs> of course, all of us wish for peace. But obviously, peace cannot be achieved in a vacuum. It is intertwined with justice. In order to achieve, and I'm sure you'll agree, in order to achieve durable peace, Justice must become the foundation of our social system. We are truly blessed and fortunate to have a peaceful, strong interfaith community here in Naperville. I've been actively involved, uh, like Ms. Gelder said, uh, in the Naperville Interfaith Leaders Association, and we have a lot of activities with, with people of different faiths. 
we are truly blessed and fortunate. But you know, the unfortunate reality is this is just an oasis in a growing desert of hatred. We all heard of the senseless killing of three innocent people in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, just earlier this week. One of the many recent examples of hatred and intolerance. Well, it is unfortunate that this animosity is cultivated by bigotry and a rampant wave of misinformation out there. In fact, Pew Research just published a study. Uh, they've done a research of uh, Americans uh, to see what they thought of other uh, people of different faiths. And unfortunately, Muslims rank very low on that list. However, there was an interesting piece in there. They said that of the respondents who responded positively about the Muslims, they were the ones who knew about Islam and they knew Muslims. Which is why, on behalf of the Muslim community, I'd like to extend our warm gratitude to all of you for giving us the opportunity to present to you the true Islam. The Quran says, O you who believe, stand out firmly for justice as witnesses to Allah, even if it be against yourselves, your parents, and your relatives, or whether against the rich or the poor. So for us as Muslims, it's not just a social obligation, it's not just a social responsibility, but a religious obligation to stand up against injustice. Whether that injustice was perpetrated by Muslims or non-Muslims, it's clear, the injunction is very clear. And when I talk about injustice, it includes anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, racism, or any other form of oppression. I'd like to conclude from a quote from, again, from our Prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him, who said, help your brother, whether he's an oppressor or the oppressed. And the companions asked him, oh, Prophet, I understand we, you know, how we can help the oppressed. How do we help the oppressor? He said, by stopping him from oppressing. And I'd like to end with a short prayer that's in the Quran. It says, Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dhul jalali wal ikram which means, O oh Lord, you are the source of peace and from you comes peace. Exalted you are, O oh Lord of majesty and honor. Thank you and peace be on all of you.